David Edward and James Michels discuss James's new book, The Ballad of Johnny Carlo. Jim, how are you? Hey, I'm good, Dave. How are you doing? I'm doing really good. Thanks for taking the time to join me here um, on my podcast. My pleasure. Sure. Now, Jim, you have written a book that has one of the best openings that I've ever read. We, we, we were just talking about it. What on earth, how on earth did you come up with that opening? Um, off the top of my head, really. Yeah. You just... know, I, uh, I guess I learned um, in a class in high school one day, they said a good way to kind of get somebody involved right in your work is to ask them a question, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. Especially, I don't want to give any... one, don't make them think. Yeah, I don't want to give anything away. Um, and I read a lot of books. And I talk to a lot of people, but that is just the best opening, one of the best openings uh, that I've ever read. So, and so I jumped ahead. But um, so you've written this is your second book, is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah, and this this is and what's it called? Um, oh, the first one? No, the second one, the one we're talking about. Oh, yeah, the Ballad of Johnny Carlo. Yes, the Ballad of Johnny Carlo, and this is your second yes, book, and your. And your first book you wrote about um, a year and a half ago, it came, out, it came out the beginning of last year. Is that right? Yes, sir. And this one came out the beginning of this year? Yep. 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 Yes, sir. Now, your first book was written in, in first person, and this book is written in third person. Yes. Walk me through that. Because first, I've never tried uh, first person. I, why did you try that with your first book? And then why did you shift? the third person here in the second book um so when i started my first book i mean first person i wanted to make kind of like a uh um fictional autobiography and i'm a big fan of uh james patterson's alex uh, alex cross series mm -hmm. and when he writes from the perspective of the protagonist um it's always in first person so i always thought that was kind of clever um but then with this other book about Johnny Carlo, I knew it was going to, I was going to have a whole cast of characters in this one. And I wanted to, with third person, it makes it easier to kind of jump to different perspectives as yeah. well as to jump to, to different scenes, you know? So you can go, for example, in my book, you can take, you know, you can go to New York and then the next chapter is going to be in, new orleans and you're able to do that without adding so much you know so much detail whereas then with the with my first book which i still love um it was definitely a uh, a challenge of mine of kind of how can i make these scenes with the same perspective and still keep the reader's attention right right if that makes sense it does make sense and and the ballad of johnny carlo i mean let's just be honest it is a book it is, it's a it, it, it's a serious book. You, you weren't just trying to get something out so you can claim you wrote a book. I mean, this thing is is epic, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that word epic. It is. It's epic. And I don't even know how to describe it. I, you know, I, it is. I look, I like it. And um, it's I, I, look, I don't want to I don't want to blow your brand, but it is a man's book. At least, at least you know, I mean, you know, I mean, it is it's just a tough guy book and it is it's so refreshing to me to to read the thing i just i don't i don't know i just i'm, I'm really i'm really a fan. i really hope this thing blows up for you um because it's just it's one of the more it's just it, we don't get we don't get books like that anymore you know it's not it's it's not a corporate disney marvel movie it is it is it is right i mean and you dig into these characters and, and we've talked and and uh you know you, you you're very humble about it but you're a tough guy yourself i won't go into it but but you're 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 a man you know you're a dude and you wrote a dude's book um and i just think it's wonderful so so tell me how did you transition though what 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 was it you know you wrote the first one um well first of all why, why did you even want to start writing in the first place let's get into that um to be honest i'm actually a late bloomer when it comes to writing i uh i've always been an avid reader and you know, it just dawned on me one day, you know, why don't I take a crack at this writing thing? You know, like I have all these authors I love and I kind of wanted to, I kind of, I, I imagine like with authors, it's like this big, great hallway, you know, like this big grand hallway. 
with all these different statues. And that's just how my, how my mind goes. And I kind of wanted to have my own spot, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So I said, yeah, let's give it a shot. And I started writing. Um, and the first thing that came up that popped up for me was it's a lot different having something in your head and actually getting it out there, out of your head and onto, um, in this case, onto paper or a Word document. And then it's definitely a, a whole nother thing to have it actually published as a physical copy. Yeah. So as I was writing like the, the um, my first book, I didn't, I thought it was going to be kind of a, like um, just the one book. But as I was writing, I realized, wow, this book's getting long. You know, <laughs> I might have to, I might have to chop this up into different, uh, in different books. And um, so I did that, but as I was finishing up my first book, I had this whole other idea for Ballad of Johnny Carlo. And I said, well, why don't I take, you know, a step away from this series, the ice series, and kind of see where this idea leads me. And, you know, it, that's just how it kind of started. I, I, I made a little list of characters for it. And I said, wow, the, these characters seem cool. How can I make all this work? And, uh, I just started doing it. So I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to go with um, after Ice Rising was done. And then I just realized, whoa, I have a lot of ideas, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's so, keep going. So did you, I mean, so when you started writing the Ballad of Johnny Carlo, um, I mean, did you have it in your head? Did you outline it? You know, what, what was that? What was the process of starting to write that? Um, the process of starting to write it? Uh I kind of just, you know, I've always been fascinated with the um, everything that kind of leads up to this point type of story. Like, you know, you you start you start off with a crazy situation. Like, whoa, how did how did it come to this? And then the rest of the story is, um, you know, it, it just tells you how it got to this to make where it starts off more believable if that makes sense well what well, does and that's incredibly hard to do I, I i cannot tell you how many times i've seen that done and and i'm just like i don't like it but did now did you write that the first chapter first and then and then craft a story to get there or, or did you write it last or how, well, how do you do that um i start off with the very beginning yeah uh, okay you know and, and in this case the prologue and i start with chapter one um to be honest, when it comes to writing, I, I'll, I, I'll have maybe like one or two, maybe three great scenes, great points I want to get to. Usually the beginning, the end, and then somewhere in the middle that I think would be fantastic. And then really for me, it's just like kind of putting a puzzle together. Sometimes it takes a minute to find that, that next piece. But um, yeah, I just kind of go off the top of my head with most of it. Now, do you do you sit down? Do you for, do you force yourself to write like so many words a day, or do you have time carved away, or how do? Because I mean, this book it's a, it's like a, about one hundred forty thousand words, and you wrote it in well, how long did it take you to write? I don't want to guess. I, I know that the public how long between you published, but how long did it take you to write this thing? Um, a little. It was about a year and a half. Year and a half. Okay. And, yes, sir. But one hundred forty. So did you write on a word count per day, or, or I can't do the math in my head on how many words a day that is, but it's a lot. I mean, it's it's not trivial. Um. It's hard to explain. I really don't just because, you know, I, I do have a lot uh, going on aside from writing, you know, I, you know, I'm married with three kids and I also have a, a day job where I work, you know, 40 to 60 hours. So um, it's definitely a balance. So I kind of go by scenes. Okay. A lot of times. Okay. So I'll go by scenes or I'll have a goal to like finish a chapter at a certain point, like, like, okay, two or three days, I'm going to finish this chapter. And then once I finish, I'll usually give myself a day to kind of, um, to rest unless, unless I have an idea for that scene that really just, you know, blows up in my mind. But with my process, it's usually like, okay, this chapter's done great work what's the next scene? So like that next day, I just kind of spent thinking about what the next scene is going to be. 
Now, now, did you find yourself going back and reading uh, what you had written up to a point to get your head back in it or just to, for consistency, anything like that? Um, actually, I've had to, especially with um, as expensive as Johnny Car- as the Bell of Johnny Carlo got. There, there were certain details that I had to remind myself of, you know, yeah. like, you know, um, like, OK, I can't put this character in there because they died two chapters <laughs> ago. <laughs> uh, he, you know, can't come back from that. Um, and uh, but also what helps is what helps is when I go back and read, it actually answers a question that I was having, you know, like, uh, what's an example? I'll, I'll just make it up, you know, like, oh, how did he, how, how was he driving this car? I forgot, how was he driving this car? And I'll go back and read it. Oh, he stole it. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, I mean, oh, good thing I put that there, you know. I, I think you used the word borrows in quotation marks, if, if I yeah, remember what yeah. I read. Yeah. Commandeers. <laughs> Bar- Commandeer, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, well, it's interesting because the books I write, are about half the size of your book. And, and I will, it's just like what you say, I'll be honest, by the time, that's, I mean, even half of your book is a big book and I'll get towards the end of it. I have to remind myself, just like you said, what's going on. And I have to like, is, did I abandon any characters that I started, you know, you know, that kind of stuff. And you did something twice that long. Um, it's just uh, over a year and a half. That's just, it's just incredible. I know that's not a question. I'm just complimenting you, but uh, it's because it's true. <laughs> So did you ever, you know, that's a long time and this is a big book and it's an epic concept. Uh, was there ever a point when you're like, uh Oh, I, I can't, I'm not going to finish or I don't know what to do or anything like that. Um, actually in the beginning, uh, when I, when I wrote, um, when I was on chapter three, which I'm, I'm that's the chapter where the, the, the world itself that I created gets a lot more expansive. And I, I kind of had some doubts as to if I was a little, if this, uh, this whole story and the background was a little too ambitious. But I just, yeah, I just kind of kept going with it, and um, by the end of it, I miraculously, I'll admit it, 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 it I, I miraculously <laughs> got managed to get it all pieced together pretty well. How, how did you keep yourself from repeating? you know, the same pattern over and over a couple, because I mean, again, with this much material, it's just, you know, you have to be wildly creative to, to keep it, to keep it different, you know, and to, and to keep the story rolling and not just do the same thing again. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a very active reader, so it kind of really keeps my, uh, my creative juices flowing. And just when I read a lot, I, I read a lot of books that kind of have similar cliches and I try to avoid those or at least take it and uh, take it toward a a new route. That's not as explored. Right. You know, and I've made peace with, you know, like, like this book's about, you know, like gangsters and cops. So it's, that's been, you know, my philosophy is people have written about gangsters and cops before. The question is how do you make it? You know, how, how do you make yourself different from the rest? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you find that you were good at some types of uh, action scenes or, or dialogue? Your book is very dialogue heavy. Wait, did you find you were good at some types of dialogue, but, but maybe not as good at other types you had to work at or anything like that? Hmm. That's a very good question. Uh, the action scenes can be a little bit difficult. You know, um, especially with these ones, especially like, like near the end there, you know, with, uh, with what happens there. Um, it, it was definitely, it was definitely a struggle trying to keep it exciting and still like a little bit realistic. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. For, for me, I, 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 I started my books and they're kind of, I started off as, as military thrillers and I wanted to have like a big set piece with a big kind of fight scene. And I realized, I, I couldn't do it. I'm very good at smaller fight scenes, but but when it got to the big ones, I'm just like, this, I actually cut it out. It's like, it's just boring. It doesn't really do anything. It's just pages and pages of stuff that really doesn't matter. It's like, what happened? You know, but but you do with, with the dialogue, you really drive um, to specific points. You, you can, you can, I don't even know how to describe it. You can feel the dialogue heading somewhere, 
before it gets there, if that makes sense. So I, mean, I think it's, it's how many drafts did you end up doing for this thing? I mean, I mean, how many times did you go through it and work on that? Or is that just, are you just the world's greatest writer? And uh, no, you know. no. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I'm a great storyteller. Okay. But as the best, like sitting down writing, I, I've had to edit it two or three times. Okay. Okay. So you would go through, you would read it, you'd find pieces and you cl- did when, when you edit, did you find you were taking stuff out or putting stuff in? Um, mostly there was a little bit of addition and a lot of replacing. Okay. I kind of realized I used some of the same words over and over again. Yeah. So I have to go back and kind of make a conscious effort. Like, okay, I've said this word about seven times in this paragraph. <laughs> and the paragraph's only four lines. That's, yeah. that's a little repetitive. Yeah. Um, especially with the word had, you know, like I'm horrible with the word had. So yeah, yeah, that I, I think that was a whole edit of itself of was changing all the hads. Right. Yeah. I've actually, it's, it's fun. I've done that. I did the same thing when I was trying to get that tense, right. Right. They were talking about the third person past tense. You, I go back and I just did a search, like how many hads are in here? It's like, you know, 1400. Well, there can't be 1400. That's too many. It's like, it's half the book. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's hard to, cause that word just, I don't know. I agree that that's a hard word to get away from. And then the brain is funny, right? It's like, you, you think you got a good word and you discover you used it six times in, in, in a row. And it's like, yeah. I can't, I can't keep saying, you know, I mean, the car was sporty. It's like, okay, we get it. It's sporty, but describe it some other way, you know, or whatever. I so. really like the word. <laughs> I, I know. And, and the, and your brain just like, it's like you don't even know you're doing it, right? I don't. And then until you go back and you look and you're like, oh, that's that's not good. Just like just like what you said. So that's interesting. So how long and what was the process between the time you finished writing and the time you actually hit the hit the publish button and put it out there? Um, let's see. I started writing. I started writing it. Uh, it had to have been about let's see, May or about two years, a little less than two years. I think I started writing it in what year is it? Uh, May of 2020. Okay. And I, uh, it was published, I believe the first of March of this year. Okay. So almost two years. Interesting. Interesting. Have, have you been surprised about the reception of the book? Is there anything um, that people have said to you or, or anything um, other than our conversation here <laughs> that, uh, you know, that, that surprised good or bad, you know, good or bad, uh, anything surprising about it? Um, I think a lot of people are, are very, they, they love the, um, the, the gangster aspect of it, the mafia. Yeah. Which if you read the book, it's definitely a strong presence, you know, but it's not specifically a mafia thriller, you know, but a lot of people found that um, refreshing, especially in, in today's age. Yeah, yeah I, I did. I, I did. I, I honestly did. And because it's just I mean, I've I've seen it. I've seen it before, but I haven't seen it for a long time. And you do some very interesting things with it. So it was refreshing for me, just like, you know, in you know, zombie movies had gone away. Then they came back when they came back. The first couple ones were, you know, it was good to see them again. Now they're done to death. So I think, I think you're onto something with the, um, with the genre and the way you've approached it, because um, it, it, it feels very modern, but still very classic, if that makes any sense at all. So, right. So what advice would you have? Let's say there's someone else um, like where you were a couple years ago and they think they want to write a book. Uh, maybe they've got the ideas in their head, you know, and, and um, uh, they're, 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 trying to figure out how to actually do it uh you there yeah i'm here okay i lost your hold picture on. hold on one sec please there we go okay sorry about that no worries all right so my my okay. question uh, yeah what, yeah my, my question was let's say there's someone who's you know what advice would you have for someone who um maybe has some good ideas in their head and they're, and they're trying to figure out exactly how to, to get from those ideas from up here to get them out there into the world like you've done? Um, just start writing. Yeah. And definitely keep reading. Okay. It's great. It, not only does it, I said earlier, it gets the creative juices flowing, but it's also great um, inspiration for when you really enjoy how some authors write. As well as you know, it's great for studying your own punctuation and, you know, any typos you might miss, like, oh, okay, they use, they use commas. 
I think commas might be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well right well right pick a good author i guess to make sure you're right. following right the uh yeah no i think i think that's right just learn because it's like um learn the structure of how to tell uh, the, how to write the pair how to write the sentence and write the paragraph right because there is a way to do it um that might be different than than how you how you think about it so i think i think that's good advice so are you, are you working on a third book actually i'm working on a fourth book i have um i have the sequel to ice rising the rough draft's done. I'm, uh, I have my editor working on it now and I have, uh, my buddy that does my covers. He's working on that now. So in the process of that, I'm working on my fourth book, which is a series of short stories. So I'm oh, kind yeah. of doing, I'm kind of doing the ice series, like every other book and then throwing in like a fresh idea. So you're challenging yourself. So you wrote, you wrote War and Peace and now you're going to write short stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. All right. Well, look, Jim, it's a pleasure talking to you. And when some of these other books come out, let me, let me know. And we can record another one of these and we can talk about maybe anything you learned or any, anything in your process, writing process that changed, um, you know, as, as you continue to, um, uh, you know, write books and uh, tell really good stories. All right. Okay. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank bye. you. Yeah, bye. Bye. Thank you for watching. Please consider hitting the subscribe button.